we're, we're, we're destroying the image that our sons need to, to grow into men. Because the government doesn't mentor boys to become men. The government's not a physical man. Y'all got what I'm saying? You have to have a, a boy needs a physical example of manhood in order to know what a man is. Now, because of the lack of men in our homes, they the, 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 this crazy media has told our sons and daughters, this is what men are. And they're putting the worst of us on TV, and we're, our children are patterning themselves after killers and because th they think that's what men are. Amen. Why? Because in their home, there's no reference. There's no reference for what a man is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So without anybody that doesn't have a reference can never really understand what they were create what what they're supposed to pattern themselves after. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, uh, most most girls are in most women have problems their whole life if they grew up without a mother. No matter how strong she got herself together, if she grew up without a strong mother in her life, that girl gonna have problems all her life. She gonna always have issues. Why? One of the things she gonna do she gonna always get used. She gonna always get abused. Why? Because everybody come in her life, she's going to look for mother. She's going to look for motherly love. She's going to think she's going to find it in men. Men going to use and abuse her because she didn't get reinforced with the basics, a foundation of love. She don't have it. So therefore, she'll go throughout life looking for that. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, so, so the problem with us is our foundation. It's always our foundation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right, let's go to work. Now, y'all, 1 Corinthians. Look at verse 11, chapter 13, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Amen. It says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. Amen. That's the scripture that all men, especially black men, need to understand. In other words... There is a time that it's okay that childishness is acceptable. There's a time that unfaithfulness is acceptable, instability is acceptable. There's a time that you can act a fool and be a fool and, are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a time that you can let people down and not keep your word. You can be childish. It's just a time of immaturity. We don't expect much from children. That's the reason why we don't expect much now from grown men because they have not grown out of being a child yet. Talk back to me. So, therefore, the Bible, Paul is saying that, that there was a time he was a child. Now he said, listen, he said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. I thought like a child. Speaking, child is speaking. Child is understanding. Child is thinking. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Then he flips it, which makes me understand something has to happen in order for me to, in order for this childish speaking, childish understanding, and childish thinking to be eradicated. Something must happen. Because if this thing doesn't happen that causes me to, un to, to put away childish speaking, childish understanding, childish thinking, I will never grow into a man. I will get in grown relationships and talk like a child and understand like a child. Talk back. So when a man matures, there's things that a man has to have. Some of y'all should have wrote this down. You don't have to, but if you, if you want to raise men or you're looking for a, a real man, then you'll, you'll write this down. Amen. Because for every good man, there's 20 busters. Buster is just a man that wasn't trained to be a man. Don't, 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 don't. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. He just what didn't know. You can't just like you, you wouldn't expect a person that never studied math to know how to do it. But yet we are expecting these black men to be great men without no training. And we think, ain't you a man because he's because he's 18, because he's 20. So it don't matter that he grew up, was he developed? The Bible says, train up, train up. Somebody had to do something to impart to bring him up. It ain't just let him grow up. Any child can grow up. Everybody, you gonna grow up. That doesn't mean your mind grow. That don't mean your thinking grow up. That don't mean your understanding grow up. That don't even mean the way you talk grow up. Talk back to me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, 
for a man to be a man, he had to, he's going to have to have somebody investing into him. Man stuff. Talk back. Amen. Now, most of you sisters are suffering because y'all was with men who were still, who never grew up. Talk back. You thought he was a man. Oh, and physically, yes. That's what's fooling y'all. That's what's fooling you. That's why, what these brothers working on. They working on their hair. They working on their physique. They working on their sex game. It's all physical. They work on their wardrobe. They work on how good they look. And because they have the trappings of a man. Now, it's not hard to fool y'all because you women don't know what a man is anyway. It ain't like he got to do too much because you've been bamboozled anyway. Talk. Oh, uh, y'all mind what you Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Especially a black man. That's why y'all hurt now. What are you saying? I don't. I don't. Could nobody tell me he wasn't. But you're hurting because he wasn't developed. And a person that's undeveloped can never develop. Now listen, this is, this is, this is scripture. This is something you women got to get. Get this. The Bible says that a man, a husband, he, he washes his wife with the water by the word. Then he presents this beautiful thing that he's created to himself. He has to be a man who understands his role is not to, to receive. But his role is to give. He takes this woman, whatever condition she is, because the Bible says husbands love your wife like Christ loved the church. So therefore, then what did Christ get? Did he get a good brat? No. He got a schizophrenic, sometime with him, sometime whorish woman. That's what the bride he got. Say amen. So he said, love her anyway like I love my church, right? Therefore, that means, that's what told every man right there. If Christ told you love your wife like he loves his bride, then you look at the bride and you see how messed up the bride is, then you know you ain't going to get nothing all the way right. It takes a man to marry a real... No, ain't no real woman stuff. It takes a man to marry a woman because no matter how real she is, she's going to be messed up. You don't believe me. Amen. What was wrong with Adam and Eve? Wasn't no, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't no bad world. She ain't had no sisters in her ear. Wasn't no feminist movement. What happened to Eve? Come on, talk back to me. There was no corruption. It was just one old serpent. Out of all the serpents, one old serpent that she listened to. All this positive environment, but the one negative, because of the because she's built this, this you gotta understand, she's she's wired differently. God created her. You see, this this women and men are the same, is what's wrong with y'all. We're not the same. We're wired differently. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If a man wants his woman to be like him, they'll never stay together. If, a, if you want your man to be like you, you, won't, you can't be with him. Y'all not together because you're the same. See, y'all arguing over that y'all different, which is the whole purpose. He has what you don't. You have what he don't. Just because you have something he don't don't mean you better. It just means you got something he don't. The Bible says that, that, that two are better than one because when one falls, the other one can lift him up. So God puts, us with, God puts me with somebody who's strong where I'm weak. Now, because of feminism, we've been taught men and women are the same. We've teaching our sons that they're the same as women. Then we're expecting these boys that we taught ain't no different from women to be a man. But men have to be trained to be men. They have to be taught what their role is. Talk back to me. 
Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So in the Garden of Eden, there was no stimulus other than the serpent. Y'all got this? So Eve listened because she's wired. she was wired to listen. Women are wired to listen. That's the problem. All the advertising ain't for men. Every advertisement on TV is for women. There ain't no advertising for men. The adver- men don't need advertisement. A man already know what he want to buy, what he want. That's why most men go straight to get what they want. It costs a lot of money. It don't, that's it. They don't have to see stimulus where just, oh, I see a power saw. They don't need to see it on TV. Man know what he want. Why? Because God created Adam to think. The Bible says God told Adam, this is what you teach your sons. Oh, boy. Go to Genesis. This is what you teach your sons. No, no, don't go to Genesis because I, I, I won't get done with my message. So stay, stay here. Let me lay my foundation because I want to get done. I'll go to Genesis and we'll be there for a while. Listen, when, when Adam was created, he was created without a woman. The first thing God told Adam was, listen, I want you to name these animals. Use your mind. Talk back. Use your mind, man. Name these animals. Whatever you call these animals, that's what they're going to be. Now, think about the capacity of Adam's mind, that he could name all these thousands, millions of animals, insects, bugs, and he never forgot the name of them. Therefore, Adam was working with supernatural power before he sinned. But, the, but, but, but what God required from Adam was the same after he sinned. Even though Adam had sinned, what God required from Adam was the same. God still said, I require you to work. I require you to use your mind. So what you do, you teach young men to use their mind. What are they doing? Everything that boys have now divorces them from thinking. They can stand there and play a PlayStation. You don't need no, you don't need to think to play a video game. Video game is repetition. There's no thought in it. You can just, it's like a, like a monkey. You can just rep, it's just repeating the process. That's all. But he's not really thinking. Thinking is cognitive thought reasoning. We don't train our sons to think. Talk back. But God told Adam, think. Y'all got that. Y'all got this. Why? We're wired different. Amen. Adam was thinking. He was working. Say amen. He told Adam to go to work. Say amen. A man that don't work will never, ever fulfill purpose. You have to work. Working is spiritual. The more unspiritual he is, the less he'll want to work. The first thing a man that gets really born again do is say, I need to be productive. The Bible says, let the thief steal no more. But go to work with his hands so he can get back in time and eat. That's what happens when you get saved. If you, ain't, if you ain't dominated by having a desire to contribute, then you might not be saved yet. Because after you get saved, God sets your life in order. And from their own brother, you a giver. How long do you give till you die? You die giving. The Bible said, Adam, the thorns and the thistles are going to kill you, boy. You're going to eat, but it's gonna, you're going to eat by, by these fighting these weeds. Now, I'm going to give you a command that you're going to have to love your wife and protect her. We, we got that wrong, too. When it said rule over, we got it wrong. He said protect. I mean, you're going to have to protect her. I'm making you do it because after you come home and fighting these thistles, you're going to be a little angry. You're going to be bitter. You're going to blame her because you did blame her for getting you kicked out of the garden. You know he did blame her for that. Talk back to me. So I got to give you a command to stay with her. The command was for Adam to stay. It wasn't no perfect woman, partner. As a matter of fact, if you really want to be honest, the Bible says, God said, Adam, I'm a, you curse because you listened to the voice of your wife. His wife got him cursed. But God said, stay with her. Now, you should know you ain't going to get nothing good. Now, the reason why you, you sisters are losing brothers is because y'all fronting. You need to go ahead and just be the crazy you that you are. That way he understand what he getting for, and he can decide y'all tricking him. You tricking them, making them think you really do want to cook all the time. You don't want to cook. Come on. You got certain hair that's not, you know, things that's not. You tricking. You ain't that tall. You just so many things you tricking with. Your eyes ain't that color. Your eyelashes ain't that long. Why do that? You know, if you if you really wanted a real man, just take all that off because this is the real you. 
He can see you. He ain't gonna see this <laughs> after the. That's what. And then that's what. Every brother, every man will tell you after they marry them. That's when they say, "Man, I didn't even know." That's when he's disappointed. <laughs> she tricked me. Why? Cause now she walk around like ain't your mama. Now, why? What's wrong? Cause she did all that to get him. It says, saying, this is the real me. The Bible says that when Adam met Eve, they was both naked and understanding. In other words, they was transparent. He saw the real her. She saw the real him. When he saw the real her, he said, this is bone of my bone. God never said that was his wife. He said, she's my wife. She's going to be called Eve. He chose her because he saw the real her. Now, because he chose her, he couldn't get rid of her. That's why God said, I don't care what she did. She your wife. You teach boys this. Ain't about no big booties and no titties and no none of that. All that stuff gets old. Their young girls going to have bigger and better. You teach a boy to be committed to his word. No, you ain't hearing me. You committed to your word. My word is good. I said my word is good. When I told my wife I do, my word was good. She know his word is good. Amen. She ain't up praying, oh, I hope he don't go out here and mess with nobody. I've been all over the world by myself. She know I ain't doing nothing wrong. My word is good. Amen. You train your son to keep their word. Amen. That's how they be growing to men. Amen. So God told Adam, a man is just snoring by the words of his mouth. You said she your wife. You said she bone of your bone, remember? Adam said, this is bone of my bone. God didn't say that. Amen. Adam said it. God said, since you said she's your bone, how you going to get rid of her now? How you going to say, it's the woman you gave me. I ain't prospering because of this woman. See, it's this woman. See, if this woman, if she was really for me, then I would be making it. You said this is why you women never want to be with a man who hasn't made that decision about you yet. Because if he hasn't committed to truly marry you and truly to make you bone of his bone, then he'll always come up with that. He can easily say, well, shoot, you ain't mine. We just trying it out. I want to see if you fit. And, and if, if a person is trying you out, what are they really judging Talk back. Y'all know. What are they really judging? They judging sex. That's all they can judge. They don't know you enough to even judge you. They just know. They just. Uh, uh, let's go to work. Okay, now. Now. Okay, so we're talking about this rights of passage thing. So the Bible says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But, say but. When I became a man. This is why God cursed Adam. He said, Adam, I created you to be the man. Not just look like the man, because you do know that after Adam and Eve left the garden, he still, he could shoot seed, he had sons, but shooting seed didn't make him the man. What, made, what, what God was looking for was responsibility. He said, Adam, who told you? Did, did you eat out of the tree? No, no, shut up, shut up. Shut, remember, God was so frustrated with Adam that he's like, Adam, it's the woman you go, boy. Shut up. Who told you? Who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the, did you eat of the tree? Don't tell me what this woman done did. I gave you a command as the head. See, you Negroes want to be the head, but y'all want the woman to fight. You want her to bring home the bacon. You want to make sure she working so y'all can make ends meet. Oh, don't mind what her about this. Don't mind what her this. Well, you got to have two incomes in this society. Said who? You nigga were popping out these big old head kids. <laughs> Wanted to stay pregnant and bring home money. Y'all know, come on. Baby after baby, but then crying because you can't make ends meet, partner. You do know there's something called family planning. Amen. If you can't pay for one, Amen. 
So, so what God was trying to get Adam to do was say, don't, no, 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 no. You ain't, you ain't even got to go no further. You ain't even got to go to her. Don't even, no, I got her. Come here, come here, girl. Get back here. You behind me. God, if you're going to deal with anybody, deal with me. That's all women want. That's all women want. Adam created a, 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 a complex in women right there in the Bible. I, can't, I wish I really want to go there, but I don't. When Adam, when God asked Adam, what, what's wrong with you? Where are you? Did you the tree? He said, it's the woman. At that point, he separated. Then did the Bible not say they were one flesh? Amen. Talk back. Amen. They one flesh, right? When, they, when God were judge Adam, he said, it's the woman. He separated. He abandoned. Uncle, what you say? Uncle, what, who, what woman, what country? She could be live on the moon. Woman got one number one issue. One number one issue. They go crazy over this. They, they, they operating in witchcraft, controlling, fighting, dis destroying everybody. One issue, what is it? Abandonment. Woman's most greatest fear is to be abandoned. That's why she put a man through so much. And what if for 10 years he's still talking about you don't love me? She running the brother off because brother like, well, what am I got? Now what's the man saying? Can't you see it? I ain't telling you. You want a harlequin. Now I don't talk. I'm doing. You brother should have said amen. Because men, we do. That's how we show. But women need to talk back. Because they was wired to hear. That's why she listened to the serpent. They wired to hear. But Adam said, but, but Amanda said, I ain't got to do nothing. I ain't got to tell you nothing. What's the least thing men want to do? What's the most, a real, what's the most thing a real man want to do? No, he want to work. Real men want to work. That's all he's talking about. They don't want to talk about nothing else. I have all these counselors says, so what they want, the woman always saying the same thing. I'm trying to talk to him, and he won't talk to me. And the brother's sitting there like, like, I'm done talking. We don't get nowhere when we talk, because she don't really want to talk. Amen. Talk is conversation. Amen. She won't vent. <laughs> he's, he's separated at that point. He's done. Talk back to me. And so she's over here watching him watch 15 hours of basketball, football, fuming. He's on the phone. Man, you see that shot? Talking for hours. Mama call. Sister call. She's fuming. When he hang up. How was, how was, how was everything they hit side? Well, what you, what you want to eat, whatever. That's infuriating to a woman. Y'all, you brothers got to know it. You got to know that. That's infuriating. She won't know what you want. They be fronting. Don't be, don't be let them be front. He wouldn't be fronting. They be front like, I don't want, I don't get, they be wanting to know. Because you know what? In her heart, she won't please. That's really the truth. She won't, she won't make sure she got what you wanted. Uh, whatever, whatever you cook is fine. Don't say that. Be specific. Because she wants to know. That's what, oh, uh, y'all don't want to talk back to me. Go to Genesis. I'm try, I was trying. I, I'm, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. I'm going to get there. Go to Genesis chapter uh, two, 3. Are y'all there? Not yet? Now, y'all better know. It's the first book. You ain't been in church in a long, long time. Have you ever been to church? You better know where that Genesis is. Genesis, you need to know where two books is. All right, look at Genesis. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. See, why are you talking about these relationships? Because men are trained to get married. Yeah. You train your son to marry. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole other level right there. I can feel the, the, the whole mind twisting. The, no, you train your son. You train your son to get a woman that replaces you. Few 
claps on that. Give me a lot of claps on that. That's why we ain't raising men, because y'all are so scared to let these boys be men. You're training him to be somebody else's good man. You don't want him to be your boy, but he's going to be some other woman's boy. She don't want no boy. She's selling for boys, but she... All right. Amen. All right, let's talk. Then go over. Let me show you. Can I show y'all something? Go over to chapter 3. Chapter 3. Now, I'm not going to deal with all this. Look at verse 10. Now, you know they done sin. Amen. They done sin. We know what to do. We need to really read what the sin was. Okay, everybody, you've been in church long enough to know what the sin was. Sinners know what the sin was. Look at verse 9. And the Lord God called unto, unto uh, Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Say, Where art thou? Where art thou? Amen. That, 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 of course God knows. I'm, I'm, I'm nip, he, knew where, he knew where Adam was. He want Adam to locate himself. Locate yourself. That's what you brothers need to know. That's what men need to know. Where are you, brother? The greatest question that you women should ask a man is, where are you? And don't, don't help him. See what he say. Can he locate himself? Or, he, or is he always in between places? Does he have a stable location? Can he stable, Can he really locate himself? He's always, I'm fitting to get a job. I'm fitting to start a business. I'm about to leave my baby mama. I'm, I'm going to get my own place. He's not located. He's every, oh, oh. That's what we're training our sons, not to live in this between life. I know men like, I had uncles like that, live between. Never did stay, just always living somewhere. Where are you at today? I'm over my sisters. I'm over living with her, living over her, live outside. <laughs> Never could locate himself. Oh, that's a good word. Oh, what a wonderful word. Amen. Depending upon the guy's question, you already know what's up with him. Yeah. Ask your son if he's old enough. Why are you? He ought to be saying, you know, I'm going to graduate. Uh, uh, I'm, I've got this under my belt. I got this job I'm holding down. Now, if he's young, he's going to have some goals. He should have some goals. Of course, he's too young to actually achieve everything, but he should have goals. He should be talking goals. But how many of y'all know when he's a man, when he's grown, ain't no goals. Ain't no talking goals. He should have accomplished the goal. See, when I get on my feet, you chicks have gone for that fool. Then. I got a dollar in the dream. Keep dreaming. You need to dream about more than a dollar. What kind of lying? Oh, my goodness. If I wasn't a pastor, I would be in, oh, my goodness. I would be a monster because the mind of people is so messed up. I mean, I, what line is this? Give me, what yeah, hey, you know, no, 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 no. I tell you, you know, you know, I'm trying to get there. I just ain't got nobody believing me, but I just got a doll in the dream. Doll in the dream, and I'm telling you, if you, if you can get down with this, you know what I'm saying, we going, I'm like, dude, that's, that's Goldie. That was what they said back in the, you got to believe in me, baby, and if you just believe, I'll take you to the world. And he's going to tell her, get out there and sell your butt. That. And y'all so slow, y'all just mess with, oh, he got a dollar in a dream. He got, and he chose me to, with the dollar in a dream. I wish my daughter would, oh, my goodness. She, oh, boy, I'll be going to jail. Well, you, a dollar in a dream? You better get this nigga out of here, because if I come back with it, I'm going to spit his head, sit right here, show quick to the white meat, get him out of her. Come in here in front of me, present himself to my daughter. I, you know, I, I love your daughter, and I got a dollar in the dream. Boy, you, baby, I'm, I'm with my wife. Oh, baby, don't, no, don't, don't, baby. I just suddenly see him ride walk this street and just run him straight off. <laughs> let, me just, let me just kill your dream and everything. Mess up my daughter with a dollar in the dream. Now, what you're saying is, she is your dream. You dreaming she going to do something for you. 
Why are you black man? In between girlfriends all the time and in between baby mamas all the time. What well, locate yourself? Brother living the offender life. <laughs> Every time you say I'm offender, I'm finter, uh, I'm finter. F-I-N-T-A. Finta. <laughs> I'm Finta. No, dude. No Finta. What, what have you accomplished? Amen. Talk back. Amen. Why y'all think God told Adam, ask him, Adam, where are you? All the time I, I, I talk to my sons, and I, even though they're young, they're young, they're still under my roof, and, but I talk to them in, in, in terms. What's on your mind? What you thinking about? I'm trying to get them to locate them. When they do something silly, I say, what, what's wrong with you? Why'd you do that? And I don't let them say, I don't know. Uh-uh, don't, I don't, we don't have to play, I don't know. I make them give me an answer. Why? Locate yourself. Because if they can locate, listen, if they can locate themselves, they can begin to hold themselves accountable. Talk back to me. Let's go to work. Almost done. Is this a good word or not a good word? Listen. Now, now God said, man, where are thou? Listen. Now, y'all ready for me? And look, look, verse 10, it says, and he said, and this is this guy. Adam, you know, you know, Adam, you know, I know that's my partner. We're gonna see each other, and I'm gonna, we're gonna hug Adam and everything. But, you know, part of you just be like, dude, you messed it up for everybody. The answers you had wasn't even. And we might have done the same thing. Who knows? But I'm just saying, Adam, come on, man. God see you. This is the same God created you. Look at this. He said, and he said, I heard that voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Are y'all there? So he's, he's still hearing the voice of God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now look at what God asked him. And he said, who told you you was naked? What you, where are you getting this information from? Who told you you can't make it in life? Who told you you a thug? Who told you you a drug dealer? Who said those things to you? Who told you you can't love one woman for the rest of your life? Who told you that? Those were not my words. You've been infected by another voice. Oh, y'all heard what I'm saying. He said, has thou eaten of the tree where I commanded you not, not to eat? He said, now, now your problem is that you've ingested something that I didn't give you. And then what you've ingested is sin. Sin makes you think you're inferior. Sin makes you believe you cannot. It's your sin. Yeah, you sitting there smoking that weed all day. That's why you can't get a job. It's your sin that makes you believe that. It's your sin that makes you throw up your hands and say there's no opportunities for me. It's your sin that justifies selling crack or, or pills or whatever you sell now. It's just your sin. If you didn't have that sin in your life, guess what? You, you could see yourself doing better. It's your sin. Oh, boy. God diagnosed him right off. It's, you know what's wrong with you? Oh, don't you come with them excuses, boy. You done ate something. You, oh. you ingesting something. It's something you done mess with. I ain't tell you to mess with that. You only like that because it's what you have brought into your life. Now, you can fix this, man. Oh, good word. Oh, black man, you can fix this. Oh, hallelujah. You can fix this. This is not permanent. But you're going to have to let alone the thing that caused you to see yourself as inferior. Look at verse 12. He said, and, and, and the man said, oh, boy, here we go. Do you women, this is why women be mad at us a lot of times. This is verse right here. And the man said, see, he didn't hold himself accountable. This is the problem with men. My mother told me, my mother told me a story about my father. She said, you know, my father would get a good job. And then he just get an attitude. I had to break that curse because I know that was on my life. He get an attitude and quit. 
You know, you happy. This Negro went out here and got a good, you know, good job. And come home to me, Daddy, that Negro on job say something crazy to me. I told him where he can go. Okay, well, did we broke. <laughs> he never thought. He never held himself. Nobody ever told him. You got responsibility. You can't just do what you want to do. Yeah. You got responsibility, man. But he never put away childish things. So childishness is a temper tantrum. Amen. That means I want to get my way. So you, he go on a job trying to get his way. Amen. They ain't paying you to do your thing. Amen. But he ain't put away childish things. So when he don't get his way, well, guess what he do? He quit. Say amen. amen. Then he come home looking for agreement. Y'all catch that later. Amen. On the pep talk over wrong, he done done. You know how boys do. Amen. Tell me it's going to be all right. No, dude, you got bills to pay. What's wrong with you? Amen. Quitting job. Go back and humble yourself. Amen. What was God looking for? Why didn't Adam fall down on his face and say, oh, my God, I'm sin. He's still trying to get out of it. It ain't me. No, no, this, this is us. This is, this is us, black man right here. Oh, 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 it ain't me. And so, so now we got to have the justice system to force me. We got to go on Maury. If you brothers ever take a girl on Maury, you mess with the wrong girl. It is, now, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I don't know if you're going to come out of bag on me or not. But if you got a, if you a woman and you, got, you don't know who the father of your child is, you got bigger problems. We used to have a word for that. <laughs> kind of like the word we got today. It's called trifling. There's some things you should know. Amen. Now I'm telling y'all this because we I'm really speaking to young men. Because a lot of brothers get that, get them babies put on them. And they don't know no better. Fifteen years later, now we won't come clean. You don't, you don't spend house money in there. Won't come clean. Say amen. amen. That Maury messes us up. I'll be laughing over that. I mean, I don't, I, I, I see it every now and then. I'll be really trying to figure out is these people for real? Is this made up? Are they serious? Are, would you get on here and embarrass yourself like this for real? What? And I said, no, they're doing it because this generation don't care. You mean you're going to give me a plane ticket and a hotel, some free food, and about a thousand dollars? Oh, yeah, I go over here and say whatever. They don't care. They don't care. And then guess what happens? Every time the man is wrong, the girl's automatic victim, but she the one don't know who the daddy is. Now the man does disconnect from it, the seed. You do know a man disconnects. The woman keeps it, so she should know. Because she keeps it. He, he disconnected from it. Uh, we ain't training ourselves properly. Let me move on. I feel y'all getting tight. Let me move. Let me move. Let me move. I don't really care, but I'm just moving so I can get done. Look at this here. Now, look. Now, he says, I heard your voice. And he said, who told you you were naked? Now, look at verse 12. And the man said, the woman that thou gavest me to, to be with me. Now, he lied right there. He lied. I'm going to tell you why he lied. Because God never gave that woman to him. Amen. The Study it out. The Bible says God presented. Amen. That means, that's, that's like, now giving you something would say, here, this is yours. God brought her right there. He had to choose. Amen. Study it out. He said, this is bone of my bone. Amen. He looked at it and said, oh my good, oh God. 
you know, I, I knew it was something that I needed because these animals, I'm getting, I won't get in no trouble. Thank you, God. He the one said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So see how he lying? Okay, say accountability. He the one said she was his wife. He said, this woman, you blame it on God. You gave this woman to me. You, you know how y'all do when you thought God told you to marry them and be with them, and then you say, God, well, you brought them in my life. What to say you didn't hear God? You did what you wanted to do. Now, the same God that brought this person in your life, it's the same God that's telling you leave them. Is God schizophrenic? Does God, does he have a problem keeping his word? If God told you to be with him, you do know God mean be with him. How is it we get a word so fast? When it's something we don't, when we, when we tired of something. Quickly, God is speaking to us now. Why ain't God telling me, pray more, fast more, humble myself, shut my mouth. Why ain't God, oh, God don't talk like that. The only God we hear now is leave. But the God that, it was the same God that said that was ours. It's, ain't this not what Adam doing? Not holding himself accountable. That's why it would have been wrong for God to tell Adam, this is your wife. Because God would have been forcing that on Adam, and Adam would have always been able to use that excuse. So that's why Adam had to choose. So Adam could never say somebody else did that. He decided this is his woman. Y'all there are not that. Have I lost y'all? Let me tell you something, honey. If you're a woman, you want a man to have that reference. You don't want his mama to tell him. You don't want no pastor to tell him. You don't want his friend to tell him. You don't want nobody to tell him. You want him to say, baby, God showed me you are my wife. Do you want me to tell you why? Do you really want me to tell you why? Matter of fact, you don't even need him to say God said it. You want him to say, I know you are my wife. You know why? Because in, you know you're going to disappoint him. It's just a part of marriage. You don't want this Negro not having no foul and no reference that he chose you. All of a sudden, he, you know, this guy's got a, a back door. I didn't choose you anyway. No, you want no, you chose me. That's why God, that's why we teach our, that's why we teach our sons, you ain't putting your seed everywhere. You choose one woman. Choose one woman and choose to be with her for life. I bet you would choose right if you knew you only could get one. You won't choose whores and strippers if you know I can only get one. You won't even choose with your eyes if you knew I could only get one. If you knew you, if you really knew in your heart you only gonna get one, you'd be a studier. Go, 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 no, be quiet. Go get your mama. What's your mama look like? Where your daddy? When your mama talking right to your daddy? Who? Let me see who the people are. You be choosing differently. Ain't no looks, no big butts. You be forget that, cause I know you gonna be like your mama. Let me see who your mama is. Show me, show me who. Uh, is everybody in your family divorced? I need to know that. Cause y'all got a curse working, and I know if it's curse working, somebody, somebody in your family worked against all y'all marriages. I know they gonna work against us. So let me see what's up with your family. You be choosing differently. Yeah, baby. How many? Ba what? But ba what? Oh, so you didn't save yourself then. So. You brother, cal calculate. Don't, don't leap. Love ain't blind. Love is thinking. That's why they always want to take you to bed first. See, when you fornicate, you have sex with them, it clouds the issue. Now you, not now you lost your mind. You're not thinking, you're feeling. And when you start feeling, your feelings lie to you. That's why you got to, no, 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 don't you take, I ain't going to want it, no, 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 no. Because you're going to make me stop thinking. And when I stop thinking, I'm not going to be asking the right question. And it's them questions that's going to come up afterwards. And then you say, why didn't I ask that at first? 
Because you was too busy emot- having an emotional soul tied to sex that you wasn't thinking. Because once you begin to start having sex and stuff, you, you cloud your issue. And then you overlook the fact they still with the other girl. But when we get married, he'll leave her alone. <laughs> Don't, they, they do stuff like this. I've had counseling sessions. Don't tell me. I know. They do that. Like automatically. Because, you know, once you start having sex, you, just, you, you, you leave reality. You just fantasy world. Somehow it's going to work out. As bad as it is, it's going to work out. All these strikes and red flags and all, it's going to work out. You don't found girl after girl, but it's, somehow it's going to work out. He loved me because he got that doll in the dream. Y'all never let y'all. I wish my child would even sing something that silly. Amen. Doll in a dream. Let's look at this. Now, listen, now, this was the problem. Now, I got to close, y'all. Let's see what time it is. If nothing else, this is entertaining. It's true, but it's entertaining. So sit there because it's entertaining. Look at this. Now, listen, now, he done, now, listen, I'm trying to show y'all what the man did. Now, he done told the woman, who, 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 who you, you know, this is this woman that you done gave to me. Look at what he's doing. It's the woman. See, when a, if you marry a man that's, listen, oh, hear me. Say, hear me. If you be with or marry a man that is, hasn't learned to be a man and be accountable and responsible, he will blame you. He will blame you for his shortcomings in life. That's why these Negroes be domestic violence and stuff, because they blaming the woman why they can't get ahead. Because she got with him before he was even ready to be a real man. Because when a man really wants a woman and he, he changes his life, yes, yes, yes. he recognizes that this is really it. So he knows that for the rest of my life, I'm given. We have raised a generation of boy men that have been trained through videos and music and rap music and movies that the woman is to give. The woman is the one that's supposed to always give to him. We have a generation of men that don't even like women. I'm not talking about gay men. They're straight men that don't like women. They hate women. Look at how they treat them. They hate women. You done been with a man that hate women. He hate women. No, it's wrong with him. He hated women. He didn't love women. When you have a man who is not prepared to put away his childish things, he will make the, he will make you and your children sacrifice to keep him in his childhood, so he can buy cars with thirty-inch wheels, waste money on three hundred-dollar tennis shoes. $500 PlayStations and phones that cost 600 Toys, because children only want toys. Boats, and he ain't got no house. And beauty shops and all that, getting his hair and nails and feet done. Because he don't know men supposed to be rough. He ain't figured that out yet. I don't care what these metrosexuals say. You ought not want to reach over your man's hand softer than yours. You ought to be like, what's wrong with you? You know, so you know what the security of a woman is? Rough! Yeah. Negro's hand is so hard. He's rough. I'm soft. What are you and your man competing with the look? We both in a minute. Move over, girl. Move, you move over. You girl, move over. Let me get my. He got as much skin stuff as you got. Nails is pretty and long and getting his feet scraped and done. Oh, I don't care what they say. You borderline it on gay. Amen. Your woman is created to shine, man. You ain't supposed to be out shining, your woman. I ain't 
got to look good. The Bible tells me when you see, you know how much I love me while, while, while you see my woman. When you see my woman, when she's shining, you know I'm a cold guy, whether I'm shining or not. Do you know why? Because she's only shining because I don't want to shine. Y'all ain't had no man yet till he let you shine. I ain't say let you rule. Qualify that. But allow you to be the woman. You frilly and feminine. You ain't got to do nothing to worry about, you know, just taking care of pepper, being soft. That's why you women so hard. These brothers won't let y'all be feminine. They too busy being feminine. Feet soft and yours, he wearing sandals and jeans. Why wear skinny jeans and frilly shirts? <laughs> See the style brother walking with his feet flopping. Flop, 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 flop. Sound in jeans, pockets is touching it in the back. Boy, what's wrong with you? Let that woman be a woman. Let her be feminine and pretty and frilly. It's okay. You want to look at your man here and say, Lord, let me, let me help him. Amen. Rough. Amen. Why, Adam was created in the wild. Men ain't supposed to be soft. Amen. Metrosexual is a step away from homosexual. Her, <laughs> you got to watch that stuff, man. Brother twitching and moving wrong. You know they coming out of jail now. They coming out of jail. You chicks is getting this, get the number one in HIV because y'all ain't, y'all don't see this stuff. No, oh, no, 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 sir. I don't want no brother like that. Y'all too busy looking at looks and stuff, trying to get this cute. Forget that. I be seeing good brothers all the time. Like he's some good brothers. And the women walk past these brothers. And this nigga roll with 30 inch wagon wheels and 75 goals in his mouth. That means this guy got an extra roll of alien teeth in his mouth. Amen. Tattoos on his eyelids and eyes and stuff. And here's a brother just going to work, eating the cheese sandwich, because he's saving his money. Amen. Every time you see this guy here, he got KFC grease running down. He's just a beast. He don't deny himself nothing. This guy here stacking bread for his house. And y'all passing up these dudes because y'all y'all falling in love with these fools. I call this foolish. They ain't put away childish things. Why would a grown man get a paint job on the car with Skittles? That's childish stuff. Why would you ride around with SpongeBob on your car? That's childish. You ain't put away childish things. Why would you make your car look like a Tonka truck? What? You ain't put away childish things. Grown men, 40 years old, running around with skinny jeans on. He's a child. Why wearing with old, old, old 80s jogging suits, do rags and stuff like he? We grew up, we popping and locking. We did that years ago. Big granddaddy. Now, we and my wife was watching something. We, no, we was watching something about uh, Jam Master Jay and them cats. And all these cats on her was grown. They 50 years old. Still walking around. <laughs> Man, you granddaddy. Where is your gray hair? Where is your suit, man? <laughs> Brother, you ought to have some shoes that are so nice that they about 20 years old, but they still in style. Because they gators and floor shines and stuff. You walk around with a bunch of tennis shoes. 50 years old. Y'all got to grow up out of that stupid stuff. They ain't put away childish things. Talk back to me. Cars and no houses. You ain't put away childish things. Seven cars, but no house. Car for every day of the week. But you can get put out tomorrow. Something wrong here. We got to come up, black people. Quit calling this stuff good because our sons are watching this. Our sons are seeing this like, is this, is this what a man is? I won't teach my son that. Never, every time I see it, I say, son, that see, this is what foolishness is. I said, son, he put $20,000 in a $2,000 car. Now, as soon as he put the paint job on the rims and all that stuff on there, he just devalued the car. 
So he just took a cold loss. He going to shine till he get locked up. Now he going to try to sell the rims and, and all this stuff he done put in the car. For, 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 for 3000 I said, it's bad economics, son. Almost done. Why? Because we don't have people telling us this stuff is foolish. It's foolish. I told y'all, we always look on the news. These guys, they're, getting, they're out here getting shot up and killed, and we always stop the vibe. It's the guns. No, it's not. Ain't no gun shooting nobody. Ain't no gun shot nobody. Ain't no gun ever jumped up and shot nobody. A gun is like money. What, whoever got it determines whether it's good or bad. You can have a million dollars in the hand of a saint can be wonderful, and you can put a million dollars in the hand of a murderer, and he'll figure out, take a whole million and find out how to kill better. It ain't the money's neutral. It's the spirit behind who got it. So a, a gun in the hand of a person who's, who's, who's a good person will stop a bad guy. The gun in the hand of a thug will rob you. Guns ain't murdering people. They try to pass these gun bills. I say, ain't no gun ever shot nobody. Niggas shoot people. Guns don't shoot people. If it wasn't no gun, what the, did you ever get stabbed? You know them, them suicide bombers, they, they strap a bomb to they say they blow you up. What, what, you don't need no gun to kill nobody. It's the spirit of the person that wants to do that stuff like that. But every time they do that stuff, we on the news talking about what's wrong with us. I'm telling you what's wrong. We don't call foolishness foolishness. We're not telling these young men, put, put away childish things. Almost done. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. I, I can't go no further. Let me, let me give y'all this couple of little uh, points and I'm, uh, statistics and I'm done. Y'all there? Too much? That's what our black men need. You need to hear this stuff. They're going to get mad. I don't know who you think. I'm talking to you. Who he talking to? I'm talking to you. Who else have talked to you? I'm trying to wake up them girls. See, if you wake up them girls, them brothers in trouble, see, because they living with y'all. They keep dope in y'all house. Guns in y'all house. See, why they trying to make like these brothers out here just doing wrong, like, they, like it's a separate uh, 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 organization. They got mama or girlfriend or sister keeping dope and guns in them houses. They ain't got no house. So they harbor all that stuff, and then they get on the news crying for, oh, I don't know what happened. You had a gun in your house. You kept the dope in your house. Why don't we say that? Have anybody ever asked that? Where did he live? Oh, he lived with his sister. Where was his gun? It had to be in the house. Where was the drug? In the house. So if we can get the women to wake up and realize what good is. And stop accepting anything that men are putting down. Then just by default, the men will say, I got to be better to get a woman. But when you make it so easy for me, when it's so simple, all I got to have is a body. Give you a smile. And you will go to work for me. Use me for a babysitter. And we try to figure out why is all this molestation going on. Just meet men, use them as babysitters. These guys take, done took psychotic drugs his whole life. You leaving them with your children. That's what they leaving out why this word crimes are happening, because they taking psychotic drugs. Guys, uh, what's that stuff? Turn them into zombies. Whoever thought somebody would smoke a snort of bath salt, don't eat people. <laughs> Ain't no way in the world I leave my children with nobody no more. Amen. No, sir. Oh, you got trust. Look, I only take it one time. I ain't got trust to mess my child up. You trust them. Amen. You trust them. Let me get done. Look at this. All right, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to read some statistics because this is a book we're about. Amen. Now, in the 1990s, the United States imprisoned African-American men at a rate six times that of white men. Six times. African-American men 
made up about 12% of the U.S. population during that period, but they comprised almost half of the population in American prisons and jails. In other words, like, think about 12%. So if we, had, if we had 100 people in here and 12 stood up, y'all ready? If 12 people in here was black and we had 100 people in here and, and all 12 black people would go to jail out of 100 people, well, ain't nobody else going to jail. Think about this. The, 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 the high school graduation rate for black males in 2008 was 47%. It's much lower now. It now it's about 28%. More than 70% of black children are born to unwed mothers. Now, this is statistics that we, if, we, if we put two and two together, we could figure this out. Amen. An overwhelming percentage of our young black men are being raised by a grandparent, some other relative, or in foster care. White families are typically five times as wealthy as black families. More than a third of all black children are growing up in poverty. A third. Black men, according to the uh, black men, according to studies, have have nearly a one third chance of being incarcerated at some point in their lives. By the time they hit their mid thirties, a solid majority of black men without a high school diploma have spent time in prison. Approximately ninety percent of Afri African American inmates are male, and fifty four percent are under the age of 29. This is our whole generation, young men. Children who are tried and sentenced as and incarcerated when tried as adults are more likely to commit another crime. That's why they lowered the statute to try out. They always want to try out kids as, as grown. This white boy is a mass murder, but let's go in his childhood and see that his mama didn't love him. So we're going to, you know. Let's, let's lock him up for a while. Let's, 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 you know, let's, let's, do, let's do psychological studies on him. Us black boy, he's just a killer. Right. Y'all see that? They try our kids as adults. You know if you try a child as an adult, that's just going to put him in the system quicker. Right. Before he even understands crime, he's going to be a criminal. They also are about 8% more likely to kill themselves and are five times more likely to be raped when you, when you try them as adults. A young black male in America today is more likely to die from gunfire than, than any soldier in Vietnam. The rate of a boy dying in America, a black man, from gunfire is greater than them, all the soldiers that was killed in Vietnam. Can y'all get these statistics? It is estimated that one out of every 21 black men can expect to be murdered. Oh, what statistic that is. One out of 21 black men can expect to be murdered in America. Twice the death rate of World War II. Twice. Oh, y'all, I know it's, it's statistics are hard to sink in sometimes. Homicide is the leading cause of death for young black men with murderous wounds, in most cases inflicted by another young black man. Are y'all there? Young inner city males are suspended are suspended from school are more frequently and for longer periods than any other student group. In other words, when, when our boys get suspended, they get suspended longer and more frequently. 90% of African American inmates, wait a minute, let's see. Between 1980 and 1992, the rate of suicide among African American male has increased by 300%. Our boys are killing themselves. Think about the hopeless despair in our black men, that they are that hopeless that they kill themselves. Are y'all there? And we talking about gay people killing themselves. Our black boys been killing themselves a long time. 300%, why ain't this no statistic? Why ain't this on the news? Why ain't there no outcry about that? A couple of cats killed themselves because they was being teased, and you can't even prove they was being teased. Amen. But here we got a statistic right here that you can map down, and ain't nobody saying nothing about it. High percentage, I told you, they, they hijacked the African-American struggle. High percentages of African-Americans with arrest and conviction records present an even, high, an even a greater problem, since many employers tend to pass over applicants who have a criminal record. See, this is why we want our, ch our sons to grow up properly, because we know that if they get in trouble, even sometimes one bad mistake, 
that could scar them for life. Now they can't vote. Now they looked at as a criminal their whole life because they are messed up. It makes them more likely to say, forget it. Throw up their hands and say, well, I take my chances in the streets. I applaud any man that has had a, a record, a criminal record, and he said, in spite of having to go and getting fired from jobs and losing jobs and getting passed over because you got a record that you hung in there, I applaud you. These type of statistics compound the need for meaningful programs and activities for our young men before they slip into the cracks. And this is the reason why, I mean, this is a small gesture, but this is a great gesture um, in the lives of these young men. <laughs> that we want to um, honor our young men for positiveness. These young men who have stayed in the house of God, have listened to their parents, Say amen. 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 And we want to give them a rice of pass. You know what? You know what the right, my, even my brother tell you, you know what our rice of passage really is in the, in the black community? Going to jail. Amen. When you go to jail and come out, all of a sudden, that's what made you a man. Amen. Every black man that's been in the streets know that. If you go to jail and you come out, that's what made you a man. You was old enough to go to jail. You know what the rice of passage is for our girls? Babies. Look at, the, look, at, look at what we consider good. Instead of going, achieving your dreams, going to college, making some out of your life, becoming successful, marrying, having a successful home, our rights of passage is going to jail and having babies. And we're not going to fix that. You're not going to fix that until you start honoring your child as for the positive stuff that they're doing. And I don't want to wait like most people want to try to wait until, no, I'm not going to wait till they mess up. It's time to start reinforcing positiveness now. I don't want to go down to the courthouse and stand there and have to say, he's a good boy, Yana, and he ain't done. No, why I'm saying I ain't saying what he was. I'm going to say it now so he know he's good. I don't want to have to rescue my son. I don't want him to be to be rescued. So that's why I chose to, to train him and discipline all my children this way, in spite of whoever said it, who didn't like it, family, Amen. friends, people don't, I didn't care. Because I knew those family and friends who's criticizing their strictness or whatever you say, they say you are, they'll be the same ones pointing their finger and talking about, she got another baby, he's in jail again, that boy's out there messing up. Yeah, but they didn't want you to train them properly. So that's why we are applauding all of our young people in this house. We are applauding all of our youth. Amen. I'm believing they're going to grow into healthy men and women. Amen. Stand on your feet.